one. Um, my name is Chris Hansen. Uh, this talk is from Mattress Salesman to InfoSec Soldier. Um, if you didn't read anything online about what this is going to be about, it's going to be on um, ways that people can transition into this industry. Um, a lot of us didn't really start in InfoSec. A lot of us kind of started in one thing and then kind of transitioned into it. And I'm going to get into that a little bit and why that works and explain some of the reasons that that honestly is one of the best reasons that we want people to do that. Um, but first thing, um, a little bit about me. Um, my name is Chris Hansen, not that Chris Hansen, unfortunately. Uh, everyone likes to comment on that, of course. Um, I'm a Twitter fanatic. My, my handle is Senpai909, so feel free to follow me. Um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, jokes, hit me up whenever. I'm happy to talk and we can, you know, help you guys out. We can figure things out, uh, get you started on your career moving forward with a lot of this stuff. Um, and that being said, if you do end up following me, um, you'll find out very quickly that I am a avid hockey watcher and uh, you're just gonna have to deal with it. So uh, let's move forward. Um, so what's this all about? Why, why is this talk important? Why is it um, even relevant to the, the field of InfoSec compared to some of these other talks that are um, highly technical, a lot more focused, um, a lot more, um, what, what you think the industry would need. Um, really, it's about you. Um, something that is super big in the industry right now is we're lacking a lot of people. Comparative to other industries, the InfoSec community just doesn't have the manpower right now. We're, we're lacking, we're struggling, and that you can, you can tell, you can feel it in the industry. Um, and it is really a rapid growing industry uh, and needs all the help you can, it can get. Um, but above all this, it's really just what makes you happy. You know, if you're not into this, if you don't wanna follow this, don't feel like you have to, there's no point. Um, really, most of the people that succeed really well in cybersecurity have passion for it, they have a drive for it. Um, the ones who just kind of show up nine to five, uh, try to get a paycheck and don't really do anything else, they, they don't tend to last as long in the, the industry, unfortunately. So. If you have the passion, if you have the drive, if you really want to move forward, this is a perfect talk for you. Um, but really, it applies to anyone who's looking for a change. Um, so if you're if you feel like you're stuck, your sysadmin that's been there somewhere uh, for ten years, fifteen years, maybe even a year and a half, you know, you're feeling like you're not progressing, you're not doing anything. Maybe it's a good time for a change. Maybe it's something new, something fresh that you've been feeling. It's just a good step forward. Um, it's really for anyone who loves a challenge. Um, a lot of people who transition into this come from like a, an engineering background or an engineering mindset. Um, so if you like solving puzzles, solving problems, reverse engineering things, creating new and unique ideas, uh, if you really like to innovate, this, this is the perfect field for you. Uh, there's so much that needs to be done. So many innovators are needed. This is the perfect place to get started. Um, people who love safety and security. So if you love having security and safety in your life, this is the perfect place for you. Uh, but really it applies to everyone because we all need security in our uh, fields. So basically my story goes like this. Um, I, I moved to a new city and I was looking for a job that made tons of money. Uh, you know, I'm a poor college student, just getting fed up of eating ramen every day, getting tired of it, and realized that I needed something that was exciting for me, something that would work in my use case, and I could afford all the fun little things that I wanted to do, fun little hobbies. Um, you know, some of the things that the mattress place was looking for, and I'm not going to say their name but you could look them up under mattress companies conspiracies and you might just be able to find them they were recently in the news um but they were looking for social skills someone that could talk to people someone that could work with people understand uh work on needs you know uh, when a customer comes in you need to be able to help them with whatever happens um they wanted people with managerial skills uh you had frequently people who would come to work and just I mean, it's a mattress store. What do you want to do? Sleep all day. You know, people just don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. So someone who could motivate those people and get them up and running and 
and doing things instead of just sitting around lazily. Um, and what I ended up with was a whole lot of time on my hands. Uh, I worked 60, 70 hour weeks. Uh, I was working from 10 o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night. Um, I'd get off work, I'd go do my own thing and wake up and start all over. It was very much like a rough schedule. If you've never done the 10 to, 10 to eight schedule, that's a rough schedule for me. Um, so I had a whole lot of time on my hands. Uh, 10 hours of work at, you know, while I'm at work, um, and like a lot of people, um, you know, when I'm sitting at work or when I'm doing things, I like to have like an audio book or a, a podcast, something that is always just kind of helping me out. I'm listening to something helping me. Um, so I'd listen to a lot of little podcasts and get some ideas and, uh, listen to YouTube videos or conference talks. And that goes down the path of, uh, what to do in this, you know, when you're transitioning, but, you know, that kind of filters into why I transitioned as well. Um, cash out big time. I made a lot of money doing mattress sales. I know that sounds dumb because you'd think it's like, oh, it's a used car salesperson. I don't make a lot of, I make a lot of money making, doing mattress sales. Um, the work hours were horrible. You worked every holiday. You had no weekends off, but you made good money. So, you know, kind of counteracts it, kind of balances it. But after a long time, I had the sobering realization that I don't want to do this the rest of my life. Um, sales is terrible. Sales is life sucking. It's, you know, if it's for you, if you love it, if you're great at it, awesome. Good for you. But it was not for me. <laughs> and so what I came to the conclusion of is I love specs. I love information and like the data sets. So when you're talking mattresses with people, you know, you've got firm, medium, soft, you know, you, you've heard all that stuff. Um, but really, when it gets down to it, the nitty gritty, you get multiple different kinds of foams, you get cooling foams, you get hard foams, you get soft foams, um, you get um, coil density, coil wrapping, you get triple braided coils, you get all these fun little things. And over time, it adds up and you've just got this whole useless data set that you can't talk about at the dinner table with friends because they're just sitting there looking at you like you're insane. So I really enjoyed data. I enjoyed specs. I enjoyed things like that. So I was like, well, where can I use this? And so I found that I really wanted to change and move forward. Um, There's a great quote. I love it. Uh, we generally change ourselves for the one or two reasons, inspiration or desperation. And I think my change was a little bit of both and I think most of yours will be as well or if you have gone through this it was you know pretty much one of these two um you're you're trying to find something you're trying to feel better you're trying to transition into this industry and really what happens is you find inspiration here um and I think that's kind of a beautiful thing but why does all this matter why does my story matter at all to anyone um most of you probably were not mattress salespeople, um, and that's fine. You know, whatever walk of life you come from, it doesn't matter. We need you here in this industry. Um, I've talked to, you know, past nurses. I've talked to um, people who coded video games. I've talked to people who are pilots or aviation technicians. Um, I've talked to salespeople, mattress salespeople, of course. Um, I've talked to a bunch of different walks of life and what it comes down to is all these different people can bring these skill sets that you normally wouldn't understand. You know, for me, when I was doing sales, you know, I started understanding like what the company would have to do for inventory management and things like that. Now on the security side, I know how to defend against some of those things because my brain knows what the end user would use. You know, medical, it's the same thing. You, if you know what a nurse is going to do on a day-to-day -day basis, you can adjust your security strategies to help pivot and protect against those things. It eventually broadens our scope of what we cover in the industry, and it helps us really diversify who can talk to who and make sense of all of it. So it's definitely a good thing to be able to transition into it. Um, my big takeaways that I want you guys to understand are, you know, don't settle. 
if you feel like you're stuck, no matter where you are, even if you're, you know, a network architect for some awesome company, if you feel like you're stagnant, if you feel like things aren't going anywhere, if you feel like they're not invested in you, find the people that will be. There's always a company out there that will treat you right, they will take care of you, and they will train you. You need to be constantly moving forward. This is not a stagnant field. You know, sales is a very stagnant field. People will be like, oh, sales is super innovative. It's been the same forever. You, there's, there's a couple steps, you just follow the cycle and you know, it's whatever. But technology isn't, it's always changing. In the past 10 years, we've seen so many drastic changes. In my lifetime, I've seen so many draft, drastic changes. Um, I mean, Palm Pilots, those don't exist anymore, you know, but they kind of do with smartphones. So just things like that, innovation in different ways. Um, but always seek for answers, you know. Um, if you feel like you're the kind of person that is always striving to know everything, if you want to be, if you have that inquisitive mindset, this is a perfect place for you. Um, I just want you all to realize that if you're stuck, if you feel like you can't do this, the change starts with you, and there's plenty of people in the InfoSec community to help you out. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit um, with resources. So this is my biggest area of talk because I dedicated a lot of time and energy into resources. As I said, I worked at uh, you know this company working 60, 70 hour weeks and I had weeks where not even a single person would come into my store other than myself. You know, my, my co-workers would take the week off and it would be like, well, I literally s sat around for 60 hours cleaning and sanitizing and doing inventory, but I didn't see anyone for like 60, 70 hours. And so for me, these resources were one of the biggest things that helped me. Um, conference talks, you know, just like B-sides. Um, you know, this is the second year I've talked at B-Sides and both years I, I'm a huge advocate for it. They do some really cool stuff. Definitely check out their past conference talks because they're still good. They're still relevant. DEF CON. DEF CON has some phenomenal talks. And I'll be honest, when I first started listening to DEF CON talks, I had no idea what I was listening to. I was just listening to it because I was like, you know what? Eventually, I want to be able to understand these concepts, these ideologies, and I want to be able to apply them somehow in my life, you know, in the InfoSec community. And we're getting there. Uh, Black Hat, you know, same thing. Um, and I'll go, or I'll talk a little bit about Black Hat as well, but SaintCon, uh, SaintCon has some really good stuff. They always have. Definitely check them out. Open West, right? Got to do a plug for Open West. Uh, I'm on the board for Open West. We're not doing it this year, unfortunately, but next year we're going to be back and better than ever and we're gonna be revamping everything. So definitely support your open source community, help everyone out, uh, make sure you show up to the conferences and uh, you know, follow what they've got. YouTube, YouTube has so much going on. All of these conference talks that I kind of talked about, they are all on YouTube. Um, so if you're feeling like, you know, maybe those are a little bit heavy, you don't understand what some of those are talking about. Like I said, with DEF CON, I didn't understand like 99% of what I was listening to, but I thought it was cool. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to listen to YouTube. And so I started listening to certain people. Uh, DC CyberSec is one that's really good. Um, the Cyber Mentor, uh, he's fantastic. If you want to learn pen testing or penetration testing, offensive security, you know, hacking, he's got a lot of stuff. DC CyberSec is more on the, the defensive side, but he does a little bit of both. Um, and Cytonic is fantastic. Definitely recommend him as well. Um, they all do news as well. So if you want quick updates on what's happening in the world of, you know, hacking and uh, malware and ransomware, all that fun stuff, it's all there. Uh, there's podcasts, you know, Darknet Diary, Social Engineering, a bunch of fun ones. Um, and networking. Talk to me. Like, I'm happy to network you guys with people. Um, I'm happy to get you guys, you know, connected to the right people if I know them. Big things that I would recommend, uh, 801 Labs, not a lot of people go, <laughs> but 
everyone knows about it. So definitely go to 801 Labs, you know, spend time, you know, spend that energy going. Every Tuesday, we do hardware night or Linux night. It rotates every week. Uh, Thursdays, we always have something going on. Thursday nights are, if you can't make it to one, you should just try for Thursday nights. That definitely has the most going on. Um, 801 Labs is great. Some of the colleges have some courses um, that you can take, but they've got clubs as well. Definitely show up to those. Those will help you out a lot. Um, really what it comes down to is there are a lot of people in this industry, a lot of people around, and we're willing to help. We're willing to show you what we know, and we've all been there before. None of us started out as brilliant geniuses in this industry. We had to learn somewhere we had to start somewhere so that's some of the big things that i just wanted to convey um and qa i know a lot of you guys are going to ask questions so i kind of want to get to that so feel free for um you know answering all of this stuff because that's really you know i want to get around to answering what you guys have and feel free to send me stuff on twitter um you can send me dms i'm happy to answer anything I want to answer all your questions. So start, start filling these up. Let's go over some of them. Um, I've been in IT for 22 years and have been interested in cybersecurity. It seems more like employers are only interested in hiring candidates with college degrees, top level certs like CISSP, GIAC, and there are a lot of associated experience. What would you recommend for obtaining low cost credibility while still keeping your day job? It's a great question. Um, this is what I had to go through when I was with Mattress for uh, Mattress Company. <laughs> um, one of the things I'd recommend, um, study up, uh, follow some, you know, do, if you don't have your Security Plus, if you don't have your um, Pentest Plus, um, some of the other ones that are coming out, Security Blue Team has a cert coming out right now that I think is really fantastic. I would definitely recommend them. They have a whole beginner how-to from uh, incident response, threat hunting, OSINT. It covers the whole range of things. Um, it's more of a purple team concept, but definitely recommend that. Um, it's about 60 pounds, so that's six modules. Definitely worth it, though. Um, some of the other ones, if you can get into SANS, if you can convince your employer to do SANS, Definitely do SANS. There's a lot there that you can learn from that. Um, I mean, it, it's one of those things where you can just try and do as many certs as available, but likely you'll end up doing what I had to do and take a pay cut to get some experience at first. And then over the course of a year or two years, you'll work back up to where you're making, if not around the same, more money. So it's worth the risk in in taking that leap of faith and knowing that the the company will eventually take care of you um, and I definitely would go for that um, I've noticed that in security industry there are very entry level positions or senior positions where they want and yeah they do um, I haven't found any mid level positions yet um, if you have a lot of experience, IT, security emphasis master, security plus, making a lot of money already, it's hard to take a pay cut and move into security. How do you overcome this if I want to move into implicate? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like I said, taking that pay cut, unfortunately, is one of the things that you might just have to do. Uh, it's kind of sad, but it is, it, it, it's almost a necessary evil. Uh, most security companies have a lot that they need to teach you that are outside of the realm of what you're normally used to. And so taking that pay cut of, you know, however much um, it is worth it in the long run, because once you learn those skills, they outweigh drastically and you will move up back into, again, that same money or more money relatively quickly. Um, you're right, though. There are a lot of mid-entry or mid-level positions. And that's kind of because that's where most of the people are in the industry. Um, we're kind of seeing like, we have some really good people who are experienced and have been there forever. And then we've got a lot of people who are kind of just in the middle. They know a lot of stuff, but not everything. It's just this weird 
transition time. And that's why it's a good time to get, you know, started with an entry level. Um, but definitely, definitely go that route. Um, I, th I think you'll be, I think you'll be more prepared if you take the, the pay cut and just eventually build back up. And I know that's not the answer people want to hear, but it, it's the truth. Um, I got two and also malicious life podcast. Yes, hands down, fantastic. Dark Knight Diaries, yep, fantastic. Um, so yeah, I, you know, taking the pay cut kind of sucks, but it'll definitely work out for you. Um, how can I be contacted? Just Twitter, 801 Labs, some meetings. I'm on a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I'm in the 801 Slack, I'm in IRC, I'm in, you know, Discord, uh, you know, I'm, Twitter's really the best way to get a hold of me. Um, I'm happy to, you know, put my number out there for people who want to contact me if they hit me up on Twitter. Um, but if you're not on Twitter anyways, you should be. There's a huge security, um, a huge security scene on Twitter, and not a lot of people like it, but honestly, that it's a good place for networking, whether you like their opinions or not. Um, it, it's a good place to be around people who are extremely influential, who do amazing work um, and do amazing things, you know, and some of them don't like certs, some of them do, some don't like educate, you know, it's whatever. Everyone has opinions on everything, of course, but what it comes down to is you'll at least be able to network a little bit better from both of those. Um, so yeah, um, let me, I'm going to type the answer there. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's my big one. Any other questions? If not, I can kind of cover some other things that I think would be mildly important, but I think the big thing for a lot of people is even if you're in this industry and you're trying to transition, like that person said, trying to transition into a mid uh, level position, you can find something here that will help you. You know, if you if you practice a little bit of pen testing, maybe that'll help you move into a mid range position. If you practice more blue teaming, if you know, whatever you're not skilled or versed in, definitely focus on it. Um, I'm not a huge Linux person. As all of my friends know, I am getting better in it. I've been focusing on it. I'm in it every day at work now, but it's one of those things where I definitely struggled and I'm trying to get better at it. And I dedicate time to practicing Linux when I'm at home. You know, some of the sacrifices that you're going to have to take are just got to do some of this stuff at home, unfortunately. Uh, if you're not willing to do that, you might want to, you know, reevaluate the industry again as well. Um, a lot of us do extra curriculars outside of our regular jobs. You know, we volunteer at conferences. I go to Black Hat every year. I go to DEF CON every year. Um, you know, Saint Con, Open West, B-Sides. Um, I go to a lot of conferences. I volunteer as much as I can. I try to get out there. Um, and that definitely would help you. Uh, good question. What programming languages would you recommend to learn? Python is fantastic. Um, so I've been learning Python uh, at this job and it has been extremely, extremely beneficial. Um, JavaScript is good. Um, I think Python, uh, SQL, mm, a lot of people use curl as well. Um, those are kind of the ones that I would recommend for starting. Um, I definitely think Python's the, the number one though right now. If, if you have no experience, it's a great starting point. It's got a lot of resources out there. It's got a lot of people who are using it every day. Um, and it's, it's really not too bad. Um, yeah, any other questions? Just grab a Mountain Dew real quick. All right, well, if you have any other questions, uh, hit me up on Twitter. 
at senpai909 or senpai underscore 909. Uh, I can connect you on any of my other things. Um, oh, let's, we got two more. If you're already working in IT and also see if your employer will let you cross train and take some security related responsibilities and learn it might not access quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're already in the industry, talk to your employer about cross training um, and explain to them, number one, if they're not cross training, they should be anyways. Everyone in the industry should have a security mindset. You know, if help desk isn't learning about security, best security practices, that's a whole, you know, problem that needs to be addressed as well. But definitely cross train, see if your employer will work with you on it and explain the, the benefits to it. Cause yeah, that could definitely help you move up. Um, so yeah, fantastic point. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, if you, you have questions, hit me up. Um, I'm happy to answer anything. Uh, if you want different ways of contacting me, um, you know, I, I will be posting a lot of this stuff on my Facebook and other things. Um, yes. Good question. Do you know if 801 Labs is going virtual for future meetings? We are. We actually had a hangout on Thursday. Um, so um, their, their Twitter, um, go check it out because they posted a Discord channel where we're all meeting. Uh, we might even have an after party tonight for after B-sides where we just kind of hang out and talk and, you know, I can answer questions. It's a great place for hanging out. Um, and it's a good, good little, you know, uh, environment, but yeah, we might, I think we're going to be doing virtual meetings up until around the 15th is when we're going to, um, reevaluate if we're going to, um, start meeting again, or we're going to keep doing virtual for a little bit longer. So yeah, join us there. I'll be on there tonight. So if you have questions, you know, if you want to talk in discord instead of, uh, messaging me on, uh, Twitter or whatever, um, I'm, I'm available. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. They are on IRC. So feel free to join that. It's, uh, the 801, uh, it's DC 801. Uh, they are on there 24 seven. I'm sure they're on there right now. Um, we are available by any means. So, um, with that, I will pass over the time. Thank you very much.